your strings. This is the reason that a lot of people give up the double strung after about three days because they can't see the strings. And then you get a nice used double strung harp. But I'd like you to be able to see the strings so that you can continue and have fun. So this is tricks number 20 through through 28. They'll be short. Okay, the first one is to be patient. And that is in the first two weeks, your brain makes all kinds of adjustments to be able to see the strings. Your brain had to make adjustments when you first got a single strung harp also. The stuff didn't make sense. You didn't know quite where to look. It wasn't a piano. So the same way with a double strung. There are people that even start on the double strung harp and they do fine. So the next tip is to use the blue and red strings as reference points. And one way you can get used to doing that is every day before you start playing, put your hands on the lowest two red strings and look at them, and then pluck those, and then bring your hands to the blue strings up above, and then pluck those, and then go to the two red strings. And you'll notice that your head is moving a little bit to see them, that's okay. And by practicing that, your brain starts to find a strategy for looking at the strings. When you're playing, you, you want to, uh, for instance, you think of a C158. You see that C, and then you see this um, index finger just one above the blue. So you'll start to, to recognize these patterns. Of course, the easiest ones are the F158 or the F5. But you'll start to get those reference points. So the next trick is to just look at the leaders. Don't try to look at all the strings. So that when you're playing a passage, you're just looking at, for instance, if you put down a four note run starting on C with your fourth finger, you just put your hands down on that four note run. The only thing you really need to look at was the C because the fingers are already placed. That's true. Another trick is to let your head move. Instead of staying stuck here and hoping that you can see everything, go ahead and let your, your head move a little bit because as the strings appear to move across each other, you'll get a reference point as to which row is farthest from you, and that's okay. Now my very favorite one is to play motifs. Play some repetitive motif in at least one of your hands. For instance, if I play just sixths in my right hand, whoops, then I don't have to look at the strings. I just play them because my mind, my muscles, have memorized how far apart a sixth is. So it can sound really great because you're overlapping the left hand and the right, like. You learned how to play a repetitive motif in one of the first videos, the seesaws, on an anchor. So you can play this for an entire song. And you don't have to move it, so you don't have to look at that side, so. Another cheating visual reference is to see a string that's vibrating that you've just played. It's going to be vibrating, so it's going to stand out and look different from the other strings. And that way, if the next string you're supposed to play is right next to it, that's easy. Or if it's two strings above it, but you've got a reference point. For, for instance, in this tune, I've got... So for one thing, I have a motif in the right hand. All I'm doing is, so I don't have to look at my right hand. And here I'm going. So when I do that, that C is vibrating. Aha! So the next string, now it's vibrating. So I can tell that these vibrating strings are closer to me. Now, maybe you won't have to do this kind of thing, but 
I have double vision, so I've probably come up with some things because of that handicap. I mean, <laughs> it, it'll be easier for you than it is for me. So if I can do it, you can do it. The last trick for playing the double strung harp is what I call happy accidents. It's when you don't see the strings right or you just make a mistake. Well, it's a happy accident because on the double strung, it's easier to recover. For some reason, it doesn't sound, <laughs> sound as much like a mistake, especially if you write your own tunes or improvise. That's really a help. So for instance, uh, if you just play something that doesn't sound good, but then just stay in the rhythm and play something else right next to it and it resolves. So if I go... That was my happy accident. This. I didn't want to play that. But hey, I'll just play this one afterwards, so... 